Wow, quite, quite, quite a battle. And we will enslave them all. Destination reached. Well, it seems the Odrysians didn't like Doina too, and they uh, they punched her. I guess they showed up. Hello, I'm Doina. Like, what? You're not the queen. So, yeah, I think that that ruined a bit the uh, diplomatical uh, relations. But hey, you can't you can have it all. Good news is that our army for the tribe leveled up. And I think we should give them Wolves of the North. Plus 5% melee for spear units. And plus 5% uh, campaign map movement. I think this one makes the most uh, sense. And I guess we should also take formidable fighters. I was thinking about taking uh, Dread Forest Ambushers. But... We got ambushed, we didn't, we weren't the, the, the ambushers, we were the ambushy. So I guess we will take uh, for just formidable fighters. It will again mess up with the upkeep, but we will get more uh, damage for all the units and more morale in offensive battles, which is something we, we lack. We're really good uh, defensively. Another thing that we did is we got a new technology. We finished researching, where was it? Uh, Headhunting. So mercenaries will be a lot uh, cheaper to maintain. And I guess our new goal is actually this technology. Yes, the knowledge of the oak. It will enable us to recruit uh, dignitaries. Uh, dignitaries for, for our faction are the uh, wise men of the forest and they really help uh, with the income from the province. So for that we will start working on the Celtic field system. And speaking of dignitaries and governors, Scorlio actually leveled up. So I think we will take... I don't think he will see much battle, so he will just become a capable bureaucrat. More, uh, more tax. And I think he will, yeah, a political reformer. Since, since he's into slaves so much, I think he will make some interesting slave reforms. From now on, by law, no one is allowed to enslave another Dacian. Only non-Dacians allowed to, to be slaves and I guess that uh, that means he also got an ambitious magistrate with him which is nice plus to authority plus eight percent wealth from all commerce and plus eight percent tax ah, this is a really good uh, uh, retainer and speaking of uh, retainers our king actually got to a medicus which gives him plus two tons to recover from wounds. Uh, don't think that uh, we will want that, because hopefully he shouldn't get wounded, because he's such an awesome warrior. And an astrologer, plus two cunning when leading an army, and plus two morale for all units during battle in own or allied territory. Hmm, maybe it makes, makes sense uh, thematically, because he is so paranoid, about invading other countries because he gets ambushed as soon as he crosses the border that he hires an astrologer. From now on, look at whatever you look, the stars, uh, goats, no pig in trails, whatever you do, just try to warn me. And since we got the medicus, we should give it to, to the other doina, since she's uh, injured. Got punched down for impersonating the queen. Also noticed she likes Romans. So maybe that's why she got uh, punched by the Odrysian. Wow. Wow, look at the lovely leaves. So anyway, slowly a baggage train will make its way towards our capital. With all the, all the new slaves and monies we got. And we actually have monies now, and that means that our uh, 
our ruling class will uh, think of uh, how best to spend it. And Rigozus, the little weasel that he is, probably thinks that, oh, these are uh, gifts from my up-and-coming uh, wedding. But then, Don Scorleone will try and convince him, Rigozus, don't you want to wait a bit with your wedding and actually marry the former queen or chieftainess of Petrodava? And Rigozus is like, yeah, you know what? I think you're right. I should wait. So what we will be doing, instead of uh, getting Rigozus married, we will promote Don Scorleone. We will be losing the same amount of money, but Don Scorleone will get uh, better at taxing people. By 50% uh, better at taxing people. So, yep. He got promoted to a what? He used to be a noble, now he's a clan chief. Good for him. I guess it's time to move the army. Oh. That way is shut. Okay. That's these are the remnants of the brazen bells. Hmm. Not much. I guess uh, the cavalry ran away. So we will attack them. And of course they run away. This makes the, the battle even more interesting. Because if we attack them, they can't run away. And that means that the, the garrison will uh, join them. The Petrodava garrison. Which means two units of Foundation Folksmen, two Celtic Townsmen, five Tribesmen. And three bowmen and another general. That's at least. Uh, actually, it might not even be another unit of cavalry. The Celts like to fight on foot. Like this guy. Naked warriors. Mm, okay. That's one way to be a general. <laughs> Screw armor. I'm, I'm just gonna be butt naked. So that means another. Uh, Interesting fight. Our 1,300 men against uh, 600 men, 2,600, 2,700 men. Whew. Okay, okay, we can do this. I think we, we were we were emboldened by by what happened in the last fight. Or maybe it's just hubris.